all my life I have been very, very physically active. Uh, very strong for my size. I've been pretty unstoppable when it came to physicality and what I could do. I had fantastic physical endurance. I've run marathons. I've ridden my bicycle thousands of miles. I've, I was into inline skating and, and caving and camping and hiking and everything you can think of. I've built entire houses by myself. I've done huge renovations on houses. I've always been very, very physically active and very strong. Until out of the blue, all of that started to change about six years ago. I started developing crippling pain all over my entire body. It wasn't localized to just a, a strained muscle or an injury of some sort. I was in extreme sports. I've broken 11 bones. I know what pain is. I know how it feels. But this was different. It was weird. It was just sort of random and crippling. So for the first couple of years, I would just muscle my way through it. Still continuing to work all the hours that I was before. Still building houses. Still doing all the things. I didn't let it stop me because I'm hard to stop. And during this time, I would, I would pray. I would say, God, you know, I know you can heal me. You've done it before. Uh, I broke two vertebrae when I was a teenager and was miraculously healed from that. I don't have any complications from that now. I shouldn't be able to walk. I know he can do it. But he didn't. So... Year after year, the pain was getting worse. It was getting to the point where instead of working a full eight-hour day, I would, I would only work five hours a day. Or I would not get out of bed until 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning just because I couldn't. It was just too much. And this whole time, I never really lost my faith in God. It was, it was more of just confusion. It was more of... Uh, developing into almost kind of anger like God this isn't fair I just want to be healed so I can get on with my life so I went to doctors you know that's what you're supposed to do right they didn't have a clue they were just starting to put me on pain meds I don't want to take pain meds I just want it to be fixed I don't want to have to deal with prescription pain medication for the rest of my life so I refused I would not take any of it and it just progressively started getting worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point later on where I started to see my ability to work, my ability to provide for my family start to diminish a lot. It got to the point where I, I would go, I have a gutter cleaning business right now, and I would go out with my son and work for two hours a day. That was all I could do. But I never really showed anybody that. I never really let anybody know that was part of my life. You know, I would work on a house and I would work really, really hard for a half an hour and then have to go sit down for a half an hour and sort of try to refocus and regroup and, and focus on letting the pain subside. And then I'd work really hard for another 30 or 40 minutes, maybe an hour, and then have to go sit down again. That just became routine for me but I never really showed anybody that I didn't really want to get the attention that I would get with everybody knowing that I was literally losing my ability to function as a as a human one of the biggest things that I was losing that I was seeing being taken away from me was my my playing drums I, I play at my church and I couldn't play anymore it was too painful and I started to get to the point where I was like, God, this isn't fair. I, I don't want to lose this. I don't understand this. I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand why you're not listening to me. I ended up going to a youth convention with the youth group that I'm involved with at my church. And I didn't really want to go <laughs> because I knew that it was going to be a lot of standing, which I really couldn't do for very long at all. It was going to be a lot of walking back and forth in this big convention hall. It was like a three or four day long thing. But 
I went anyway. Um, they needed another leader, and you know, I I just felt like I needed to go, so I did. And the whole time that I was there, they were, you know, preaching about what God can do in your life and and um, the impact He can have. And all these kids around me were all being changed, and all this stuff was happening. And inside my heart, I was like, God, I'm seeing all this stuff happen to other people, but I've been praying to you for six years to take this away from me so I can live. But he didn't. He wasn't doing it. And I, there was nothing. There was no answer. It was scary. So on one of the last nights, they had a big, you know, altar call. So I went up to the front for the umpteenth thousandth time to get prayer and was standing up front and turned around into the arms of complete stranger. There's 3,000 people there. I didn't know who this dude was. Muscular, strong, kind of shorter than I am, built dude. And he just wrapped his arms around me. And I broke. I absolutely broke in half. I started weeping like a baby, snotting all down the dude's leather jacket. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't do it anymore. It had been six years of pain, six years of, of losing my life, losing my family, losing my ability to work. And I cried out to God again saying, please take this away from me. And I finally got an answer. I finally had God tell me something directly and he said, no, I'm not gonna heal you. And I cried out to him again. I was like, what do you mean you're not going to heal me? I thought all I had to do was ask. I thought all I had to do was, was bring my prayers to you and you would do things. And he said, no, I want you to trust me. That hurt. That hurt my heart. That hurt my soul. What do you mean trust you? What do you think I've been doing for the, my entire life? I trusted you, God. My entire life I've served the Lord. My entire life I've tried to, to give him everything that I am. But he wasn't healing me. I said, this isn't fair. I don't think you're there. I don't think you're listening. And God said, yeah, I'm here. I've been here the whole time. I'm listening. I hear you. I know it hurts. Trust me. Stop fighting. Stop complaining. Stop trying to do this on your own. Stop trying to muscle your way out of it like you've done your entire life. Sit down, shut up, and trust me. And it hit hard. It hit my heart hard. It hit my soul hard. And I weeped and I cried like a child in that man's arms. And I could feel his muscles and his strength and his, his, uh, his love for this complete stranger, this random scrawny dude who came up and started snotting on his leather jacket and finally for the first time I just said okay okay God if you're serious if this is what I have to do to get out from where I am okay I've got nothing left and I could feel my heart relent I could feel my heart Stop fighting. Later on that day and into the next following weeks and months, I found myself with a, a voracious hunger to know who God is, not a religious aspect. I wanted to know who Jesus is. I had to run toward the face of Christ, the person of Jesus, not just this religious duty. So I started getting into my word, started reading the Bible a lot more every single day, but it wasn't out of a religious duty. It was out of a hunger. It was out of something that, that welled up inside of me that I had to just trust God. I had to be obedient. I had to do this. I wasn't going to survive. I couldn't breathe 
some days it hurt so bad my entire body was fighting everything that I tried to do. So I just pounded in. I was still trying to work, trying to provide for my family, working a few hours a day. But I changed my focus. You see, for the six years that I had been going through this, and even in other times in my life in the past, I realized that I had been doing and I had been focusing on, on myself, on the situations around me. I hadn't ever focused on Jesus. So I started getting serious about my relationship with Jesus. I... I started reading the Word a lot more. I started being a lot more involved in other people's lives. I started giving. And I don't mean giving out of a, a religious thing. I'm not, God doesn't want religion. He wants obedience. He wants relationship. I was giving out of my heart to other people. I was investing in these youth, in these kids. I was talking to other people about the Lord. I was focusing on Him. I was changing my focus away from the problem and onto the solution. For the next six months or so, I, I had to. I had to give everything that I had to know who Jesus is. And it's kind of like the difference between reading a biography about somebody, right? You know a lot about them on one hand. And on the other hand, figuring out where they live and walking a thousand miles to their house and knocking on their door and asking them to go out to dinner with you and investing into them and knowing who they are and sharing each other's secrets and becoming best friends. Be having an intimate relationship with somebody is not just knowing about them. It's knowing the person, knowing the person of Jesus Christ and who he is and how much he loves me. So after about six months or so, after that conference, after I finally had my heart broken, and I realized what God was trying to tell me. You know what happened to my pain? It got worse. It got a lot worse. I, I was absolutely incapacitated for a very, very long time. I stopped living. I stopped doing all of the things, all of the, the, um, the normal things that you do as a husband, as a father, as a, uh, somebody that provides for the family. I couldn't. But it really didn't matter anymore in my heart. It really wasn't that big of a deal because God still provided for us. I'm, I'm still here. My family never went hungry. Through this entire process, it's been me saying, I'm the provider. I'm the one that does all of these things. No, <laughs> I'm not. God is. And I finally was just saying, okay, I trust you. I can't do this by myself. I can't live this life on my own. My heart changed. So fast forward another six months or so, I finally was able to find a doctor who did the right tests, who um, checked out the right things. And it was incredibly expensive. That was another kind of irritation for me that the last house that I sold most of the money well not most a lot a lot a lot of the money went toward this doctor I'm glad that I had it God glad that God provided it but I finally got some answers and I'm, I'm not going to get into what exactly physically was wrong that's not the point of this video but I was put on the medications and I'm slowly starting to get my life back I'm slowly starting to be able to move. I went skating with my kids the other day for the first time in a very long time. I'm working hours at my house now. I'm able to do the things slowly, coming back and getting my strength back. I had lost a lot of weight over the last six or eight months just because I couldn't eat. It hurt so bad. I'm slowly getting all of that back and thank Jesus that he... he gave me the medications you know it's all it's actually all herbal I'm not doing any kind of pharmaceuticals it's fantastic when I was in the heat of this when I was in the worst of the worst of it I would have given absolutely anything to get out I would have done anything in order to not 
be under this pain anymore. But now, there is nothing in the world I would trade for this experience because now I know what it is to trust God. Now I know what it is to really, truly rest in Him and have a relationship with Jesus. It's not about religion. It's not about duty. It's not about all of the Christianese things, going to church and giving the tithe and getting baptized and all the things. It's about relationship. You know, sometimes God uses that still small voice to get our attention. Sometimes, like in my case, he uses a two by four to the teeth. God didn't put me through everything. He didn't cause it to happen. He allowed it to continue so that I would come out on the other side with a, an unstoppable faith, with a relationship with the creator of the universe with a give and take, back and forth, daily conversation, two-way communication with Jesus. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. For any of you out there that might see this that don't know Jesus, that don't believe in God, you might say, oh, he just finally made the connection in his mind to compartmentalize what I was going through and my own will and my own strength. I was able to get past it and no, that is absolutely not true, because I tried that for six years. I fought through my own strength and my own mind and my own heart to get past what I was going through and every kind of psychological backflip and everything you can think of. All of the, the therapy stuff, right? No. The instant that I finally said, okay, God, was when things changed. It wasn't me. I couldn't do it on my own. I tried. It was Jesus.